<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the mental house with me, your host. I'm not going to be on here very long. All right, Khadija. Um, but I wanted to share something with my younger uh, viewers, some of them that come through because I was checking out my analytics and, you know, we'll see um, some of the people that need a, a older person. Um, I realized that a lot of our young people, especially in a certain age group, just don't have a lot of uh, a good relationship uh, with their parents. A lot of uh, children that I run into, especially teens, have grew up in foster care, have grew up um, in foster homes. Some of them never lived. In fact, um, I have a few uh, young people that I, um, I'm still in contact with who have never lived with their parents. Whether they were born in prison and their mothers um, had them and they went straight from the prisons to foster care. I know that they're in di dire need sometimes. Y'all think kids are, are, are past this, but they're not. Of stories, um, having a great griot, just having a storyteller and having people who give them something to think about, an adult, something that challenged their thinking. The analytical thinking. And if not that, just to know that the bonding time between the older person and the younger person can't be replaced by anything. So even if you have 15 minutes, if you got a 30 minutes, uh, you got an hour, and if you, especially if you got some time, like some hours, it's good to join a, a big brother, a big sister a organization. And um, especially if you, I mean, if you got the right intentions, because you realize just how in dire need some of our young people are. And so it brings me to the story that I shared with some young people last night, and they saw the uh, connection between the story I'm about to read, which is just a couple paragraphs, so y'all just bear with me, and number 45, okay? And so, let's go with it. Um, have you ever done something simply due to pride or out of fear of what others might think of you? Um, this is a tale of an entire kingdom that ignores the obvious for fear of judgment and only to be called out. Okay? In this story... The emperor loves fine clothing. Two men, swindlers, arrive in the city claiming to be the best weavers imaginable. They claim that the clothing that they make is the finest and with the beautiful, most intricate patterns. The swindlers say that the, this clothing is also magical and would appear invisible to anyone who was stupid or incompetent. Now, the emperor was so excited and about this amazing product, he pays the men a huge sum of money to make these magnificent clothes. The swindlers then pretended to weave and sew the clothing with the empty looms and needles without thread. The emperor sends men to check on the swindlers' work. Each of them realizes he sees nothing. But he doesn't want to admit it for the fear that he will be accused of being stupid and incompetent. Okay? So he let him get away with this craziness. So each man lies to the emperor saying how the clothing was magnificent. I didn't even get that far before one of my kids and that sounds like the president anyway. The clothing is brought to the emperor on the day of the great procession. The emperor sees nothing. But he too did not want to admit being stupid or incompetent. So he agrees that the clothing is exquisite. 
After being dressed in these invisible freaking garments, the emperor marches to the procession in front of his whole entire kingdom. Everyone in the kingdom sees the emperor without his clothes. But for fear of being accused of being stupid and incompetent, they all sing the false praises of the emperor and his fine clothes. Mm -hmm. Finally, with a child's heart, the innocence of a child says, but he doesn't have anything on. Everyone realizes that if an innocent child is saying this, then it must be true. Everyone starts exclaiming, Ah, he doesn't have anything on. Ah, he doesn't have anything on. The emperor must then finish the procession knowing that the people are right. And everyone knows he is wearing nothing but his pride. Mm. The moral or message of this tale is that we must not let our pride or our fear keep us from speaking up. Another moral is that when children speak the truth, and they'll do it when nobody else will. That's why I love them so much. The story also shows the importance of proof in the form of empirical data, which is evidence that can be observed through the senses. No. So, I'd like for you to share that with your young people today and um, see if they can make the connection between the time we living in, like my kids did, and number 45. What y'all think about that? I thought it was pretty interesting. All right. Anyway, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, share, and um. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.